Hey Bill, how's it going? I hope it is going great out there, Mobile. On this last episode, I did this sound. And I like that. I like that idea of doing that. You know what the sound of that is, Mandy? Do tell. It's the sound of the do some good Mobile publication that is here. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses. This is the this is the analog version. We have plenty of digital version that's about to I think I think it's live at the time of this recording on the mobile rundown.com. If it's not, it it, it will by the time in the future someone hears or sees this, it will be it will be on the website. But these bad boys are out. We're pumped. This is our fourth year of doing this uh, this project, the Do Some Good Mobile project, and this is got it has grown and gotten more exciting every year. Is that more exciting? Is that like, possible? I don't even. know. I mean, I was excited the first year, and then yeah. we just kept having additional ideas for it, which has led to these interviews, like this podcast and the uh, the video interviews that we're doing. The first time we did that was last year. The third year. So. Yeah, I think a beautiful way to bring these to life because you can read about a nonprofit, you can hear about what they do, but whenever you sit down and get to speak to someone who is running this organization, um, these organizations, it's amazing. There's so much that goes into keeping these organizations alive. So I cannot wait. Totally agree. Dive well, in. well, we're going to give people some hints in a little while of who's uh, who we have today, but The music, the, I'll, I have the music, I have the music to get me, to get me, to get me excited, to get me excited for the day. Um, uh, I have some questions for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, before we bring on our guests? Yeah. Okay. What was your favorite subject in school? Don't lie. <clears throat> you know, you can tell. Math? No. History. Yes. History. Okay. And where is your Viking helmet? Because you were going to wear it today and it is not on your head. I'm very upset. So we do like to do a little surprise and try to do something uh, goofy. Typically you said that our, our guest doesn't even know that we're going to do it. So I would have, after that intro music, maybe maybe I would have had on a Viking helmet or something, but I... Can you go and post edit? I don't have one. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Something. Okay. So go ahead and tell them who we have on today and what we're going to be chatting about. We have Meg with the History Museum of Mobile. Super excited. I love it. This is a treasure for our city. If you don't know about the History Museum, get out, go visit. We're going to talk to you about all the um, amazing things they are doing. I love it. All right. You ready to bring her on? Absolutely. Let's do it. Hey, Meg. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for being willing to hang out with us for a little bit and talk about some talk about some history. You know, I forgot history was my favorite subject in school. That was actually my first answer, um, not whatever I said, math or science. Or no, something. don't history. let him fool you. He likes the spreadsheets. Um, but we are so excited to have you on. We know you are a very busy woman, and it takes a lot to do all the things that you do down at the museum. And so we just want to like, yeah, just dive in and talk to you about. Well, I'll let Brooks ask this because he does it. He does it a better way than I no, do. No, I just I just do the intro. I'm like, hey, I'm a stranger. We meet on the street, maybe at a Mardi Gras parade or something. And you tell me what you do. You're oh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm at the History Museum. Uh, I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, what would you tell me if I'm like, well, what exactly does that entail? What does that mean? Like, what would be your what would be your answer to me? Great question. That's one I do that a lot. We get a lot of people in there, <laughs> a lot of people, especially especially with Mardi Gras and, um, and, and a lot of people coming in from around um, a lot of tourists, a lot of locals, a lot of people in state as well um, who come in and find us. So the History Museum is right downtown um, in front of Mardi Gras Park, um, adjacent to the Explorium. It's the old city hall. It's been um, the History Museum has been in this location for about 20 years, a little more than 20 years now. Um, but so the History Museum tells the story of Mobile, um, and we also tell global histories. We operate three sites right now. So we have the main History Museum, um, Colonial Fort Condi, which is, of course, just right across the street. You can see it out my window. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the Phoenix Fire Museum, which is just a few blocks away, um, close to the Civic Center. Um, and soon we'll be operating a fourth site, the Africatown Heritage House, when it opens later this year. 
We do want to dive into that in a few minutes when we talk about the exhibits and coming up, because that was one of the questions that I have. I saw that in the magazine that one of your exhibits will be held at a different venue. And so I want to talk to you about that. But um, but yeah, so Mobile has this treasure. You are down there. You see these things every day. Tell me what I'm going to what I can expect to see as I am roaming the halls. So here at the Maine History Museum, we have about 20,000 square feet of exhibit space just dedicated to mobile history. So there are a lot of permanent exhibitions that tell um, a timeline of mobile history, um, that give kind of thematic looks at different parts of mobile history. A lot of those, like I said, are permanent exhibits that are there all the time. But we also have changing exhibitions. So it means that there's always something new when you come to the museum. Um, some of those changing exhibitions have to do with mobile history and are from our collection. But we also work to bring in really amazing exhibitions, um, frankly, from around the world that tell all sorts of different histories. And so right now, for example, we have The Vikings Begin, um, which is an exhibition from Sweden. Our, our last big international traveling exhibition was Egyptian mummies and eternal life. So real mummies um, that had traveled from Italy. So all sorts of different um, great exhibitions. We always want to make sure there's something new for people to see. Now, another new part um, that we've added at the museum is a children's discovery room. This is permanent. This isn't going anywhere. Um, and it's something that had been in the work for a few years and, and took a major capital project. Um, but we have a fully immersive um, kind of French colonial mobile children's discovery room. So it's like a big French ship pulling up to Fort Condé and, um, and there's a canoe and there's all these different very hands-on tactile um, ways to explore mobile history. And, you know, we want our very youngest visitors to feel comfortable and to fall in love with history and to think that museums are wonderful places to go and explore. So lots of different things to do and, and always something new to do. I mean, is there, a, is there a max age limit for that room? Because that sounds that sounds pretty amazing. Is there a... I love it. It's fantastic. And part of my job sometimes is playing dress up. Um, yeah. And so I get to do that at Fort Condy sometimes. And that is wonderful. So all ages um, love hands-on learning. Cool. You know, one of the things, like if you live in Mobile, if you're if you were born here, you're like, okay, so let's think about some of our history. We have Mardi Gras, we have things, you know, we have wars and battles and things that have been fought here. Um, and then we we have these beautiful oak trees. But whenever you come into the museum, you see names that are old Mobile names. You get to see there is the coolest. <sighs> display you probably give me you can give me better words display of um old homes and the, like the um they're like they're beautiful doll houses but doll they houses, are replicas yeah. of homes that you know that that mobile is known for the beautiful historic um very intricate very like down to like the the, the, the shag paint on the walls the or the wallpaper yeah. the shag carpet <laughs> in the yes it is amazing that is the one thing about the museum that just always blows my mind um very intricate beautiful but it's you know something that is so mobile and it's a great way to put it on display it is you know people um come all the time and uh, you know we get a lot of people who are tourists and who want to say okay i'm here in this town i want to start and learn about the history of the area before I go out and do other things in the town. But we also have so many locals who come and enjoy seeing familiar things and enjoy learning new things. Um, one of the exhibits that we curated not too long ago, a couple years ago, um, and it's still on view, is called A History of Mobile in 22 Objects. And so the History Museum has this enormous collection, 118,000 objects in the collection. And we yeah, said, that's okay, wild. Let's pick just 22 objects to tell the whole over 300 years of history. Um, and we got wow. kind of leading um, professors and writers and historians and, um, and authors and scholars in the community to write essays for a catalog. Um, that's a, a beautiful kind of coffee table history book um, about that, that was published in conjunction with that exhibition. But it is a, a really kind of interesting object based way to string together all of those because like you're saying one object can open up all these different stories and kind of lead you down all these different paths um, which is really what we were trying to do in that exhibition so there's always something um 
kind of unexpected about even the smallest objects sometimes. And that's a really fun thing as a, as a curator and a historian to get to discover in a museum. Pick, picking 22 out of over 100,000 items sounds like not a job that I, <laughs> I would want to have to do. That's so wild. And I think you said that like at any given time, you only have like uh, approximately 1% or so of items that are on display. Um, that's crazy. Like, how are y'all amassing all of these things? And is it just over time? Like the History Museum has collected things that people have either donated to you guys or y'all have, have gotten them? Like, how does that work? So great question. So the History Museum was incorporated in um, 1965. So there's okay. been some time here that these that mm -hmm. this collection has been building. Uh, most of the collection um, comes to us by donation. And so we accept, we have what's called an accessions process. And we accept things um, on temporary custody. You know, we have some guidelines. Um, but if somebody wants to donate something, our curators will look at it, consider it, see if it fits within the guidelines and accept those over the course of the year on what's called temporary custody. And then once a year, there's an accessions committee of the board of directors. Um, and this is kind of standard museum, what, what you see at museums all over. Um, mm -hmm. And then the accessions committee votes to officially bring things into the collection once a year. And so, and so that's kind of how things come into the collection. Now, sometimes we um, purchase things or, or the board will purchase things and, and make acquisitions. We recently purchased three really beautiful John Augustus Walker paintings. He was an artist in Mobile, um, in uh, particularly active in the 30s and, and 40s and, and on later too, but some really amazing paintings like of Bellingrath Gardens of downtown St. Joseph Street, um, one of rice being loaded on a ship to go to Havana. So some interesting kind of scenes around Mobile. Those are things that come up at auction. The museum says, okay, we need that to be part of the collection. Um, but there, but because there's only 1% on display at any time, there's so many fascinating things behind the scenes. There's just yeah. kind of a, a wonderland of discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys, um, do you ever do any sort of tour or allow people behind the scenes to like see the 99% that's not on display? How yes, that's super popular. We do. Typically we do it the first Sunday in August. We have an open house. Um, okay. And we do some behind the scenes tours and, and you can sign up in advance um, for those. But it is, it's amazing to see almost all of that 99% are stored here on site in, in what we okay. call our collections vault. Um, and it's just this massive, you know, highly secured space, very, the, the whole, all the, the galleries um, and then also especially the collection space very carefully temperature controlled, humidity controlled. You have to keep things within kind of fairly narrow temperature and humidity parameters. Um, you get too little humidity, things crack. Of course, in Mobile, we're always worried about too much humidity where you get mold yeah. and mildew that can really be detrimental to a collection. So those things are monitored really closely. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of interesting things. There's a, a beautiful um, Yoruba ceremonial tunic um, that's kind of hand beaded, really fascinating. There's a, there, one of the, the oldest object we have is a piece of a mastodon bone that's 10,000 years old. Um, what? Which unlike, you know, a lot of things we wear gloves, we, hand, but the mastodon bone, it's, it's you know, solid. It's 10,000 years old. Nothing you're going to do to touch it is going to, you know, anything said that's really amazing to be able to touch something. 10,000 years old. Do you know how the the museum acquired that piece? Was it found? Was it donated? Do you know? Yeah, it was an archaeology, it was a, an archaeology project. Um, not right in Mobile, kind of in the greater region in the area, and then was donated to the museum. It's incredible. There's actually, um, there's a piece of the World Trade Center that's part of our collection. There was a project really? after 9-11 to um, a commemorative project to put pieces of metal um, around in, in different museums in different states. Um, as I said, it's part of this commemorative project um, after 9-11. So some really um, poignant, interesting, difficult, fascinating things in the collection. I've got to get down to the museum. Isn't there, is there, is there a day for, isn't there a day for locals where we can go at no charge? Do you, do you guys still offer that? What is that Yes, we're free the first Sunday of each month. Which first is Sunday of each month. Yeah. 
Now the other, and we tend, especially the big exhibits, we tend to be pretty crowded on those days. The mm -hmm. other great way for locals to enjoy the museum and to support the museum is through memberships. Um, and so you can join the museum um, for a, a year membership, which is free admission to the museum, to Fort Condi. Um, we do all sorts of great fun parties for members throughout the year, special cool. opening receptions, a watch party, a parade watch party during Mardi Gras for members. Um, but Love here's it. the really amazing thing about membership is that we are part of a reciprocal membership program in the Southeast. And there are, if you join the History Museum, there are 150 other museums that you get reciprocal memberships to. So in, in most cases, That's almost incredible. all cases, that means free entrance, um, maybe reduced, but usually free entrance to 150 other museums. Um, so you get to support your local institution, but then also enjoy those privileges of membership when you travel. So it's, it's really a great deal. That's awesome. Can, uh, so if people wanted to join and become a member, can they do it straight from your website or what's the, what's the way for them to do it? That's the easiest way. Um, of course okay. you can do it in person here, but history museum of mobile.com slash membership. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll I want to talk to you a little bit about what you have in the museum right now. And then some of the things you have coming up the museum, very exciting stuff with the Clotilda, but right now you have Vikings begin. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect from that one. And that is through June. Yes, that is through June. Through June, it is a really spectacular exhibition, and I hope everyone gets a chance to see it. It is um, an exhibition that talks about the beginning of the Viking era. So how a Norse, kind of an isolated Norse farming community becomes what we think of as um, this maritime, um, martial Viking society that, that spreads really throughout much of the world and um, and, and raids and, and all the rest that we think about with Viking and kind of how that transition happened. And it's a beautiful exhibition. It has traveled to Mobile from Sweden. Um, and so it's made five stops in the United States. It's curated by the Uppsala University Museum in Sweden. And this is its last stop in Mobile before it goes back to Sweden. And so it's a really kind of special thing to get to share with Mobile. We're really excited that you know, we're able to give Mobilians the opportunity to see this. All of the artifacts in the exhibition, um, they're ab about 1400 years old. There's there's a bit of a range, but about 1400 wow. years old. Um, and they've been excavated from a Swedish grave site in, in central Sweden. And so what um, the Vikings did funerals in some different ways. Sometimes you think of um, putting a body in a ship and putting it out to sea and burning it. That was one way that um, funerals were done, but other funerals were done by putting a person in a ship and burying that ship. And so those obviously provide great really? archaeological evidence. Yeah. So there's a grave site and it's a, it's a, you know, if you imagine this kind of long, narrow boat and the person's laid out in it with their weapons and all the kind of things that were important to them um, and then buried. And so that, you know, hundreds even thousands of years later, becomes something that we can look back at and really kind of understand a lot about what was important to the person based on what is in those grave sites. There aren't really written records about the Vikings. And so what we know about the society comes from objects. And so you get to see those objects at the History Museum. That's incredible. That's exciting. I know. And I'm like, I really wish I did have a Viking hat. That I could, I'd, be, I'd be wearing it during, the, during this whole chat. That's awesome. It's crazy. Okay, the um, let's let's talk about the Clotilda because that was uh, I'm trying to remember when was the boat officially it was confirmed. I mean, it's been within the last like couple of years, right? That it that it was confirmed that this is this ship. Uh, yes. Is it is that right? Do you know? So the announcement was made in May of 2019. Um, okay, and, and had been looking for a long time. You know, a lot goes into that um, yep. very scientific process of identifying. Um, there, there are a lot of shipwrecks in the Mobile River identifying um, the shipwreck of the Clotilda, which of course was the last ship to bring enslaved persons to the United States. Yeah. And Such a rich history there. It, yeah. This cr in a crazy story behind it. And I think it's, uh, I know there's been a recent documentary that's come out. I'm glad that there's some of that's happening. And so, and so you guys are partnering or, or how is that working with Africatown to help bring that exhibit to that area? H how is that, how is that 
happening? So exactly. Like? So we have worked really closely with um, community leaders, um, with the Alabama Historical Commission, who has rights to things that are in state waters like shipwrecks. Um, and so that's the state preservation agency. We've worked with them. We've worked with, um, as I said, with community leaders in Africatown, as well as with the county and the city. Um, to, so the History Museum has two parts in this. We're curating an exhibition. Um, and then we're going to operate it when it's when it opens in this new building. So gotcha. um, the Africatown Heritage House is a new building that Mobile County is building. Um, they're really spearheading it, have support from financial support from the city of Mobile. And so they're building this um, this space that's right in the heart of Africatown, which is so important um, and really wonderful. And this exhibition that we are curating is going to be installed in that building once it's complete. Um, and then we'll operate that as a, as a space that'll tell the whole story from its West African origins, kind of through the last voyage, through the establishment of this incredible community of Africa town and um, pieces of the shipwreck that have been recovered. There, there are only a few pieces, but the pieces that have been recovered will be on display there too. Oh, I can't wait to see it. So that is supposed to launch spring of this year. Do you have a specific date yet or is that still in the works? So like so many things, there have been construction delays, um, story story of the world right now. So we're yeah. expecting this year, 2022, um, to be able to open. Once the building is complete, it'll take us a little time to get in and build out and install the exhibit, of course. But yeah. Um, you know, but but we're we're sitting on go, um, and once that's done, that's a huge thing to have um, at our fingertips. I know it's not necessarily going to be located in the middle of the heart of downtown, but bringing uh, highlighting Africa Town is a, not that we forget per se, but that is that is a massive part of our history, and it's right up the street. So it's really cool that you guys are partnered with them. It's a, yeah, well, it's a, it's a go ahead. It is. And I think one of the things that visitors can expect to this exhibition that's so important is really hearing the story told in the voices yeah. of the people who lived it. Um, yeah. And so there are lots of primary sources around this story um, because it happened in 1860. It happened so late. There were individuals that lived into the 1910s and 1920s. Um, so there were lots of interviews, lots of newspaper stories and primary sources um, documenting the entire lives of the men, women, and children who came from West Africa. And so, um, so as much as possible, we want those voices to shine through. And so yeah. people really get to hear this account um, in, through those primary sources. And, you know, the, the exhibition that we've developed is this very, you know, you kind of imagine this um, multi-sensory experience, this kind of somber um, dramatic exhibition that that kind of meets the gravity of the story. Yeah, and that, that, that's exactly what I was going to say earlier when I uh, when I so so rudely interrupted you. But I was going to say it's a it's a story. I feel like it's a story that needs to be told, and so I'm I'm, I'm glad that that's that's uh, that's exactly what you said. So, and while you still have the Vikings at the museum, you have a couple of events that you have created around the Vikings. And so you have some stuff coming up in May and June, right as the kids get out for summer. I would love to be able to talk about some of those so we can let the community know what to, um, what they can find at the museum for their kids this summer. Yes. So we have, um, on May 22nd, we have a kid's workshop. They can paint a Viking shield. Um, we have June 11th. So the, the ex exhibition closes June 12th. Um, okay. And on June 11th, the day before it closes, we're having a big kind of family day. So one kind of last chance to come, all sorts of activities as part of that. One of those activities will be a bread and butter. You can make bread and butter the way that Vikings would have made what? bread and butter. Um, so that's an RSVP that's kind of we're event. there. Yeah, right. And the rest, um, <laughs> like kind of welcome. Welcome everyone. Um, we do lots of other things, lots of other calendar events, speaker series. We're bringing a um, curator in April um, from Sweden. One of the curators of the exhibition is coming to Mobile and doing two lectures in April. So all of those things are on our website. They're on our Facebook page and, and great things for people to, um, 
to get to do and 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 participate and kind of see the Vikings exhibition and and also get a little more out of it. Now the other thing that's a really great opportunity is any, any people who have a group, maybe a, a civic group or a Sunday school class or a, a school group certainly, um, but any kind of group, um, maybe maybe an extended family kind of in town for a weekend. Um, if you get a group together, our education staff can give a tour. Um, and so that's a, a really exciting thing. And, you know, even if it's a short tour, it really kind of brings the exhibition to life in a new way. Certainly great to see. You can totally get a wonderful experience on your own in the exhibit. But if you have a group and you want to do a tour, we can set that up too. Tour is the way to go. You just get so much more out of it. I think it really helps bring everything to life whenever you have someone with knowledge walking you through it, which is amazing. Um, one of the things I want to remind our viewers and our listeners is that the museum is a nonprofit. And so one of the ways that they stay afloat and are able to bring all the amazing things to our city is by memberships, which we talked about before, and just literally going to visit the museum. And the museum is located downtown right there next to the Welcome Center. You can get all your information. I think you mentioned it earlier. It's a great place for people to start. If, if you are coming to Mobile for a weekend or you're going to be here for a little while, get to know the city, take a look around the museum. And then you also have a really nice gift shop set up right in the front now as well, which I, I was down there the other day. I was like, I can get everything Mobile related right here in the way when walking in the front door. So that's really cool. I'm glad that you guys are doing that. I know you are working very hard to do your very best for the city. And thank you for all that y'all have done. Well, thank you for that. We um, we certainly appreciate our visitors. We appreciate our members. We have um, really wonderful support, and and we are just so grateful for the people who come, who who bring out of town guests when they come to visit, who um, who support the museum in all sorts of different ways. And and there's so many ways to do that. And and we are we are so grateful. You know, we think about um, kind of on a big level our our mission. We know that we have to understand our shared past in order to work towards the future, in order to forge a future together. And so um, absolutely for people who are history buffs, there's a lot to see, but for, for those who maybe don't consider themselves history buffs, I think there's so much that we can learn about ourselves and our world um, through kind of understanding our, uh, having a sense of place and, and a sense of, um, of our shared history. And so there's a lot that looks to the past, but there's also a lot about our mission that looks to the future and, um, and, and in so many different ways. And, and so it's really a privilege to get to be part of that kind of institution. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Well, as we wrap up, Brooks has a question that he loves to ask. No worries. She puts, she puts me on this like, uh, I don't know, she like, it's like she sets me up for this, but I do. I, I have a question that's kind of become a recurring theme to everyone. Um, I, like I like to ask, is there anything that when you're talking with people or doing some interviews that you that you don't get asked, but you wish oh, you man. did get asked so that you could share? Um, you know, just does anything come to mind when I when I when I say that? And it doesn't so, have to. No pressure. You yeah, do not have I, to have any. I always no, tell everyone. Like, oh my you, gosh, if, there's if, so many things. I know. Oh, okay. No, you're there's trying so to many which things. One? Cool. Yeah. I know, right. So, I mean, I think one of the things, you know, when people visit the museum, they really, they see our public facing mission, right? That that makes sense. Right. They see the exhibits. Um, you visit the fort, you see exhibits. Maybe you come for Living History Day at Fort Condy and you see, um, you know, colonial interpreters and, and candle making and butter turning and like, you know, all of that's the very public facing. But I think what... Um, is so interesting to people to learn and what is important for us to be for people to understand is how much goes on behind the scenes and mm -hmm. you know we, we and we spoke some about that about this collection of 118,000 objects um and growing all the time and just the care and conservation that that requires year-round to protect and preserve those objects um a lot of them need you know attention and they need um you know, wood needs conditioning and silver needs polishing and just kind of all the yeah. things that are required and in that kind of care. Um, you know, we love opportunities to be able to bring those objects out, to be able to um, kind of set up like, like for example, we did a couple years ago, a, a small exhibition on wedding dresses. We realized we had this incredible co collection of wedding dresses and that doesn't necessarily fit within like a timeline of mobile history very well right, right. like within a high level narrative of mobile history it was fascinating and the oldest object 
were a pair of wedding slippers from the 1700s that, you know, we like these, these, these shoes are older than our country. Um, they're from the, the 1720s. And so kind of thinking about um, all of the, 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 the treasures, the objects that are in the collection um, and thinking too about what that means for the future and about what that means for researchers and historians, you know, 50, 100, 200, 300 years from now, who will look to this collection and say, okay, what does this tell us about the people who lived, about people who, you know, lived in the 17 and 18 and 1900s, but also about ourselves. Um, and, and so it's, it's really, a, you know, as I said, a privilege to get to steward that collection, but, um, you know, but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that, that's in such an important part of the mission too. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because we will have a history to leave behind. It's just not, it's not written yet. It's not on display yet. Eventually we become the history. We yeah. That's a great, that's, yes. a, that's a great point. You're saying like, yeah, what is, what are we, yeah. What are we procuring at the moment that is going to be what's looked back at as the history? Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, make, okay. So if, if people want to reach out and connect, uh, is the website the best way or what's the best way? Like, what would you, uh, how would you want people to, to, to link up with the history museum? Two easy ways, history museum of mobile.com. And then on Facebook history museum of mobile. Love it. Perfect. Love easy. It. It's perfect. Well, Meg, thanks so much for taking your time to, uh, to hang out with us and, and have a chat. We really, we really appreciate what you're doing and, uh, and, and thank you for, for all that you do and yeah and for taking the time well thank you so much and enjoyed getting to talk to you and thank you for um for all the all the interest in in history and in the museum it's a um really appreciate it absolutely all right, cool. all right take care talk to you soon okay have a good one all right, all right bye, bye. That's good stuff. I want a date to the museum. What did you learn about history you want a date to the museum i want a date to the museum well, let's do it let's i do want it. a family date to the museum. A family day. Okay. Yes. I like that. Oh, yeah. That's good. We'll do it. I mean, it, we put it on the calendar. We've all been at various times in our lives, and I know our son has gone on field trips and those kinds of things, but I don't mm -hmm. know. I need a refresher. I feel well, like I'm, I feel like I'm missing out. Well, let's do it while the Vikings are there. I want to, I, I want to see this, uh, I want to see the Viking stuff. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And like she said, um, one of the ways that you can support the museum is becoming a member. And so we just want to remind you guys about those kinds of things as well. And so, oh, that's good. yeah. Hop on the website, check out their social media, see what they are up to and how you can get involved. Love it. We got more interviews coming out for you guys. So stay tuned for the next one. Yeah. All right. See ya.